What's going on guys, Ian Binnick back with another YouTube video and in this video we're going to be talking about how Optimize Your Marketing is automating their internal marketing and how it saves us 40 plus hours every single month. Now really quick, who are we, who is Optimize Your Marketing and what do we do? We are a digital marketing agency that works primarily with software companies that are in the B2B space. Now that being said, we also offer partnership services for marketing agencies that are looking to automate their marketing. This is a recent thing that we've done and we actually are offering some of these services free of charge for the next three to five clients or marketing agencies that we work with because we're trying to build this out and showcase the value. So if you are interested, be sure to watch till the end of the video. There's a little CTA where you can actually take action. But the rest of this video is gonna be me walking through pretty exhaustively how we have set this up for our company. That way, if you are interested in doing this, whether you're a software company, whether you're another entrepreneur, or whether you're in a marketing agency, if you are interested in trying to automate a lot of these marketing things like your social media, like your blogging, creating video content, SEO, which is a huge one, that one's towards the end of the video. If you are interested in those things, then you know, feel free to watch this video, watch the tutorial, leave any comments if you have any questions, join our Slack if you wanna ask any other questions and interact with the community. And um, yeah, let's just dive right in. All right, guys, so let's dive right in. Really quick plug, you know, optimize your marketing. We are a digital marketing agency first, but second, we work with other marketing agencies and we help equip them with systems to scale. And that's what we're gonna be talking about all in this video. So let's just dive right in. The first thing we wanna talk about is how we have optimized and how we have automated our blog posting. So there are a couple of tools that we have done to do, uh, that we use to do this. And the very first one that I want to talk through is actually Notion AI. So whenever we are in Notion, there's a lot of things um, that you can do. But one of the coolest things that we have found is that using AI to write blog posts has never been easier when you are using Notion. And the reason why is it can use all of this context that you can give it and it'll write an amazing, very well written, very well edited, very condensed blog for you that's probably better than what I could write. So we're actually gonna show you how easy this is to do. So um, in my notion, I kind of have this segmented this way, um, but we'll go into content and there are you know, a couple of pieces that I've created in the past, but we're gonna create a new one. So usually when I create a new blog, I'll just come in here and I'll create a new page. So I'll hit enter and I'll just say, cool test blog. Cool, because this doesn't matter. This is just for this example. So anyway, when you're in here, this is as easy and as simple as it gets. So you hit backslash ask and then AI is gonna show up. So then you say ask AI. Now there's all these drafts and all these things that the AI can actually do. You can ask it to do press releases, social media posts, creative stories, whatever. You can also just literally ask it what you want it, what you want it to be. So for example, what I like to do is I will say this, can, and you're going to see a lot of my presets pop up. As you can see, I've written a lot of things. All of these are presets, um, but we'll just give it some context here. So we'll say, can you write a blog post? Uh, that is talking about how great marketing automation has become. And then I go into the next piece, and hopefully you can see this, and we'll zoom in a little bit more, um, how great marketing automation has become. And then I'll say something like, imagine you are, you are Ian Bennett the founder of Optimize Your Marketing. And then say Optimize, and then you have to literally tell the AI, you know, what Optimize Your Marketing is. So Optimize Your Marketing is a digital marketing agency that works with B2B software companies. Uh, and, <laughs> um, and we work and it also works with marketing agencies, something like that. I mean, we can be more granular, obviously. You know, I, I, I could, I usually give this a whole bunch, and I can show you an example. And then the next part um, that I'll just go into here is I just usually talk through and say like, um, 
be sure to talk about HubSpot. You know, I could list out softwares, HubSpot, and then maybe I could like put in parentheses like this is a really cool tool and cheap, something like that. And then also say, um, as well as talk about Airtable, the best, uh, <laughs> the best database software in 2023. This is all just a load of crap, but we could just do this. Um, and is there anything else that I want to add? Oh yeah, and then say like, be sure to use headers and emojis. And we hit enter. And it's gonna create this for us. So this is so random, like I, who knows, like literally this, this probably doesn't make sense right now um, because you know, we're talking about marketing automation. Um, I could probably make this sound a little bit better because it says like, as the founder of Optimizer Marketing, it's like assuming that they already know that it's written by me. Um, so there's opportunity for me to make that a little bit more clear. Um, but it's talking sort of like me. It's analyzing the content on the left-hand side or, you know, that I have in here and starting to talk like me, which is really cool. And, um, you know, this just kind of gives you some emojis and all this stuff. This is way better than just using ChatGPT because it has context, a lot more context. Plus, there's no limit. I could actually highlight all this and I could say... Um, ask AI to make it shorter, make it longer, change the tone. I could say straightforward. Let's just see what it says. Um, it might change it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more straightforward. It just kind of talks more in like the first person. You can replace the section or insert it below. Anyway, you get the point. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'm just going to discard that. So anyway, this is it, what we would do. And the coolest part is this can be done from my phone. And so I do this a lot when I'm traveling or if I'm just, you know, on the toilet using the bathroom and I have an idea, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write and create a blog from it. So anyway, I can take this content, I can copy and paste it, you know, whatever. And then I could go into, um, I could go into our Airtable. So Airtable is our like centralized database tool that we use to essentially conglomerate all of our data from Notion or just from, you know, advertising platforms or whatever. And that's what we use to conglomerate data. And so in here, you can see that this is what we use for blog posts. So I have it, I have these segmented in fields, or I shouldn't say segmented, but I've broken out into fields. So you can see, you know, blog post title, you can see the blog post excerpt, you can see, I mean, this is even like the link um, that will be used in Webflow, my website. Um, we have, you know, this I mean we have our thumbnails and then these are just linked fields where again they're just linked to different collections again it's just like me and then the categories for it and then the date so you might be you might be wondering like why did I break it out this way well it does matter and it is because inside of our website um, inside the back end of our website we have a collection and inside the collection you have different fields. So essentially the reason why we're conglomerating everything in, in, in Airtable is because we can easily link it into our Webflow using some tools and a data sync tool called Whale Sync, which we'll walk, uh, walk through in a second. But essentially whenever we are creating those fields, we're keeping our collection in mind. Our collection in Webflow essentially links things to or it links these items to specific pieces um, in the collection or in collection items. I know that's probably not really too well written or, or well said, so let me actually show you what this looks like. You can actually see it firsthand. So for example, this background image, this is an image that is from the collection item. I can change the blog and it will go to a completely different image, but I haven't actually created a whole new page. Webflow is just changing variables so that I don't have to create a new page every single time I want to make a blog is just taking pieces from the CMS and plugging them in. And as long as I just say like the heading is always here, this is always the blog blog post excerpt, there's a YouTube video, it's always here. And then all of this rich text, this is like the, you know, the whole body of the blog post. And if those variables are always in the same spot on the page, then that's essentially why we're able to quickly create blog posts. So as you can kind of see, whenever we fill this out, WhaleSync does a lot of the hard work for us, where essentially we link these fields together. 
Um, you can see the sync is Webflow or Airtable to Webflow. So we really don't have to do anything. Once we fill this out, this automatically happens and it shows up on our website. Now you may, want, you may be wondering like, oh, how did we make this, um, how do we make this thumbnail super quick? It's really simple. You just go into Canva and if you have Canva Pro, you can use text to image and then you can create images. I'm not gonna show it in this video, maybe another video if you guys are interested, but essentially that's how we're using AI to develop these very quickly as well. And again, this could all be done from your phone, which is really quick. So having Airtable on your phone, having Notion AI on your phone, having Canva on your phone, you don't even need to, there, this, there is no mobile application for Whale Sync, but you don't need to if this is always set up, it's always running. So when it detects that a change has happened, then it will update, it'll take the information from Airtable because it has this field in here that is essentially saying the last edited field. This, this basically triggers um, the automation inside of Whale Sync and it updates my Webflow website. So that's, that's essentially how we are automating our blog by you know these simple no code tools and using AI we are able to essentially create blogs very quickly. Now this being said, there are other pieces to you know our automated marketing stack, I guess you could say, that are very impressive and they go hand in hand with this you know Airtable that we just put together here and using our Webflow website. So as I mentioned in the blog post that I, that I wrote recently, which, um, let's see if we can actually pull it up here. It's probably just gonna be easier if I go in here. Blog post, yeah, here we go, okay. So as you can see, we also talk about social media posting with Make. So I mentioned this in here, but again, I, I always reference this time where I was standing in TSA and I did all of this. I basically created a brand new blog post from an idea that I had using Notion AI, Canva, Airtable, WhaleSync, Webflow to create the blog post. And then I wanted to take it one step further. So I created this automation inside of Make, which we're gonna dive into here, which is essentially a tool where we can massively, uh, you know, we can massively scale out all of these things and all these automations um, with a lot of different platforms and channels. So we'll just show you. So we put together this thing um, where essentially it detects changes in the Airtable the same way that WhaleSync detects, uh, detects changes inside of the Airtable to publish to Webflow. This, um, this little trigger here detects a change. And then whenever I run this automation, which I can actually show you, when I run this automation, it creates, um, it uses OpenAI, which essentially is ChatGPT. And I'm saying, hey, can you write a summary for this blog post content? And I'm taking the blog post content that is found in the changed record uh, inside of Airtable. So I'm able to find the piece of content or whatever so essentially the content that i want to throw in here and i'm asking ai to write a summary of it for me and you can give it tokens essentially like how long you want the answer to be and then the temperature which is how crazy you want the answer to go so 0 0.9 is for more creative applications um, but essentially i'm able to create this and um, i'm not actually doing it i'm not prompting chat gpt to do this it's just doing it based off of a change in this Airtable. So again, it's all automated. I have not done anything after after I've changed this Airtable. Everything has just gone about its course on its own. Again, with this Slack caption, since we have a Slack, um, I want it to be a little different. So I actually, really the only thing different here is that this is 400 tokens, so it's a little shorter. I don't want it to be talking about the whole blog post or the whole summary of the blog post um, inside the Slack. So I have these two different two differences. Now I'm like, okay, now I want this to be posted to my Instagram, my Facebook, and the Slack channel. So I go in here and I ask, you know, take this featured image that is from the Airtable, from that changed record, place it in here. And then I also say, take what ChatGPT, see how it's highlighted on the left here. It's, um, whenever I hover over it, you can see that it's grabbing the output from ChatGPT and it's placing it in here 
and then I've just included some more text, which you know on Instagram you don't you can't actually place links inside of posts. So I say check out our blog link in our bio, just so that people know where this blog post where they can actually find the blog post, and that will be posted. And then I go to Facebook. And it's a similar thing, except in Facebook, you can actually post a live URL. So I take that live URL from the hot, um, from the pulsing air table that's on the left there, and I'm able to throw that in. And then there's also another link here that I can just say, you know, go to the blog. So again, just a cool little feature. And then last on Slack, it's a similar thing. It's the same actually as Facebook, um, where you can include a live URL and it'll just, you know, pull up a preview image which I can show you what that looks like um, you know, another time. We'll, we'll actually show you what the Facebook and the, the Instagram post looks like here in a second. Um, but I wanna show you really quick, we've also included a way for this to send on MailChimp as well. So email all of our subscribers, hey, a new blog post just dropped and you know, check it out and it includes a live link. So you take, you know, you basically ask ChatGPT again, you're like, hey, can you write an email subject line that uses emojis using this blog cert app cert as a reference? And I only give it a 50 token max, so that way it's like short enough to be a, um, a subject line. And I made the temperature a little higher because I want people to click it, so maybe it's a little bit more crazy. Um, and then again, I also got some preview text here. Same thing, a little bit more tokens because preview text is longer, and then temperature is a little higher again. And then um, using these automations in MailChimp, essentially I'm able to choose a segment that I want to be targeted and then I'm able to create a campaign using some basic HTML down here to create the campaign and placing some of this output of, you know, ChatGPT from early on in, the, in this automation. Um, and then also including the live URL again from the Airtable. And then this just actually sends the campaign. So it takes the campaign idea, the campaign ID from the previous step, and then it says the action, which is just send the campaign. So we created the campaign here, and then we're sending it here. And that's pretty much it. But that's what we do. This takes less than 60 seconds to run, and it posts to, again, I did not do anything. I, it takes less than 60 seconds. As soon as this air table is updated, then it, it ChatGPT responds. It gives us some captions and then it sends to Instagram, it sends to Facebook, it sends to the Slack, and then it also sends emails to everyone that is inside of the segment that I chose. And then it sends the actual campaign. So super cool. Um, let's actually just pull up really quickly um, the Facebook where you can see what it looks like. And then we can also potentially pull up the Instagram as well if you want to see what that looks like. Um, we just did this today, actually. Um, this is the wrong thing, but we'll show the Instagram. So, yeah, so this is what it would look like. We just posted this like an hour ago. But again, like ChatGPT took this. It's this whole, you know, little like uh, caption here, which I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. And, and then it just says, you know, check out our blog link in the bio. I could probably make this better. There are ways to make this better. But again, I did nothing. This just got posted. And you can see here that there are other posts here that, you know, I've done this with, like this one, for example. Every week we post a new one. And again, it only takes us a couple uh, minutes to actually do this, you know, 30 or so minutes. And so we create a new blog post every week. And then we create a bunch of like video content on the side um, to do this stuff. But again, didn't do anything, it just got automated. So <clears throat> I hope you're seeing the power here where we basically have automated our blogging, we have automated our social media, we've automated emailing. Let's quickly touch upon, I know when we're in here, we're talking about scaling content with no-code video editing software and AI. We're gonna quickly touch upon just like the systems here. So we have um, systems in Miro where essentially, you know, any team member could come in here and they could quickly understand all the steps that are needed to actually create a piece of content. And so it's gonna look a little different for every piece of content, but we try to identify the things that stay the same. That way it's sort of like an SOP in case anyone wanted to come in. So um, for example, when we're making content, this, this showcases what we just talked through um, when we ran the automation above. So it's like Monday, create trust with content. Tuesday, create trust with content. But um, we are actually filming, you know, a reaction or a video. So we choose an idea and then we film a reaction or a video. We upload it into a software called CapCut, which is a really simple, easy software to use. It's, uh, you can use it on your phone, your iPad, 
or desktop computer, but we primarily do it on our phone. Um, then you can add, you know, basically upload that reaction video into CapCut, add some GIFs or GIF from Giphy. Giphy is just like a place where you can easily get GIFs. And then you download it and then you upload it into a software called captions.ai. It adds these emojis and captions to um, your video and they look really nice. And I'm gonna showcase what that looks like here in a second. And then you upload it to YouTube, you add music, you add text headline, which is gonna help with like that micro SEO on the platform itself. And then you include two to four words and three hashtags. And then you upload it to TikTok and all you know other platforms as well. But essentially that is the gist, that's the system. So let me actually show you what that actually looks like. There are examples here, um, but we you know created these recently. So here's a quick example. Um, you could see these are, you know, that's one of the GIFs that shows up. These are the captions that are, you know, being auto-applied. We didn't even do that. It takes us literally 60 seconds to put this, these captions on this video, but they're very, very accurate and they, um, they just look really nice. If you were doing this in the past without using some sort of AI software, this could take anywhere from, you know, 25 minutes to anywhere from like over an hour if you're not really that experienced. This takes a really long time to do, especially styling it in this way. But when we use AI, we don't have to really worry about it. So again, this is how you can scale creating some sort of content. And again, the more you're able to post this stuff, the more, you know, established your business looks and that's going to help. So again, speaking to those other marketing agencies out there, if you're interested in doing this sort of thing, it's really a must if you're trying to make this like a full time gig for yourself. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, that is our social media outlet. And then the last piece here that I really want to talk through is how you can automate your SEO to grow faster. So we talked about this a ton in many different blog posts, many different um, actual, many different actual freaking videos to be exact. But we talk about programmatic SEO and programmatic SEO is essentially a way for you to create 50 to 100 new pages or thousands of new pages every single month for your clients using no code software and AI. And I'm going to very simply show you how easy this is to do when you are inside of Airtable. So a couple things that you need to know ahead of time in order to do this. Number one, you need to have Airtable. Number two, you need to use WhaleSync. And number three, as of right now, you do need to use Webflow. Webflow is really the only website builder you can do this with. I have been talking with the, the folks at WhaleSync and essentially they have said that WordPress is on the roadmap to be able to provide PSEO services for um, and you know basically have that functionality in the tool. But as of right now, it is I think an early, early access so it's really not to the masses. So right now, the only way to do this is using Webflow. Now I'm gonna show you really quickly what this looks like. Inside of Webflow, you can go into any of these CMS collections. I've created a whole bunch of them, but one example that I want to show you is how you can rank for keywords that are pretty long tail. And when I say long tail, I mean there's not a lot of competitive like competitiveness to them. There are generally three keywords or longer, and um, they don't get a lot of search volume. So, as you can see here, there's a ton of keywords here: marketing, SaaS, B2B. B2B SaaS marketing strategies. These are all things that people search for in Google. And I actually got all of these from my Google search console. And I saw that I was ranking for them in a, in a basically like a, you know, the top 20 to 40 position. And I was like, well, I can totally try to rank for these by creating a specific page for each one. And as long as the content on each one of those pages is relatively differentiated, then I can probably rank higher for them and get more organic traffic to my site without having to pay for ads. That's the whole point of PSEO. And this is why we bring it, um, bring it up to all of our clients is because if you don't, if you're not ready to run advertising, you're not ready to spend a ton of money, then doing this is the next best thing. So how you do this? Well, after you get your keywords that you want to decide, you know, I can make another video on how you can actually decide on keywords. I've done this for many clients, but you can take all those keywords and throw them into an Airtable. So as you can see here, there's all these keywords. There's a hundred or so and 70 keywords in here. Um, so then what's next? Well, you are going to make sure that you have, 
So let me just make this a little smaller. The name of the solution. So this is essentially just like making this uppercase decide, like this is going to be shown as the hero text or the headline text on a website page. And this as well could be used as that as well. So either one of these could be used depending on the design of the page you want to use. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a second. And then you want to have an H3. So you want to make sure that that keyword is used in an H3 text, but you also want to include some text there too. So um, you could use a tool or an extension, which I have pulled up here, which is called Data Fetcher. And essentially you can use OpenAI and do similar commands like what I did in our make simulation here where essentially you're prompting the AI to write a summary for or write a few sentences on and then instead of the saying blog post content you could say for the keyword that shows up in this column which in this example again would be this keyword here so there could be a command in here that you can create and again if you want to see more videos on that I'm more than happy to show you but again it gets a little complicated and so I want to make sure like I'm not losing anyone here but this is, is like, like you put a little bit of time into it you would get good at it and um, you could really provide this service to other clients and you know potentially for your company if you're working there so again you can do this and you, again you're getting the B2B digital marketing tools keyword in here so that is helpful for an H3 SEO perspective and then you're also getting it in this H1 um, area as well so just having that hierarchy there and then a couple other you know basically this is at your full discretion at this point because the page is relatively differentiated enough for Google to understand that it's different but I always like to make sure that there's more content on the page um, that is differentiated so the page, the page isn't marked as like a doorway page and as unindexed from Google because that happens with people that are trying to do this not automate it like in a not automated way and they're just doing it you know manually I can understand why they wouldn't want to do multiple different h3s on here because I can you know that's like a laser way of doing it but it's also way more time consuming so I can understand why people would do that but again you can add any more content on here that you want um, so as you can see there's a lot of other stuff here there's other h3s this is like you know why is the keyword important how does optimizer marketing help with the keyword um, what we look for when doing the keyword and so we have all of these AI generated responses for each one of these terms and we're able to probably make this database in less than an hour so we made essentially 73 pages in less than an hour um, there's a slug in here too which is basically just the URL let me show you what this looks like inside of Webflow now so taking that Airtable that you have you can actually you know create a collection so inside of here you're basically just gonna select um, all of the fields that you want thrown into the page and so you know you have your paragraph text you have your your keyword or your h1 text um, and then I've like labeled these probably a little lazily I could have been a lot more specific so that whenever I do the when I actually sync these this air table with this web flow using whale sync when I sync those I would actually know like what these collection fields are but again I was just like being a little lazy because I, I do this a lot but essentially, let me actually, now let's get into the visual element here where you can actually see what this looks like. So if I go into B2B SaaS Marketing Solutions, and then, are these items in here? Okay, cool. So then you can see this, I don't actually use these anymore, um, but we used to. And so this page might be a little outdated, um, and there's some you know bugs here. But essentially, what you can see is this H1 text, B2B SaaS Marketing Campaigns is thrown in here. And then again, this is a this is a um, another example of the keyword being placed in here, which you could say yeah, why to tackle, and then literally placing the keyword inside of this HTML body here, um, and making sure that it shows up. So you have two instances of the keyword here. You have a paragraph instance. You have an H1 instance. So that's already good for SEO. If you're really you know nerding out about this, you're gonna want to make sure that it's in your title as well. So you're going to put that keyword in your title, and then you're also going to make sure that there's some instance of the keyword in your meta description. doesn't actually help for SEO, but it does help for someone clicking it if they see the keyword in, the, in both areas, but the title tag definitely helps with SEO. So anyway, being a complete absolute nerd here, but this is like how you can rank really well, 
and then again there's a there's an h3 instance of the keyword and then there's a couple other h3 instances um, basically just trying to make this page look as different as possible so that Google does not flag it um, and adding content here and then just putting more information here and then adding a couple other pieces which I would advise not adding as many as I did here because the more duplicate content the more confused Google gets and so if I removed a lot of these um, components down here it would probably rank a little bit better honestly in Google but that's all stuff that you learn over time anyway that is how we are able to quickly and efficiently create SEO pages again as you can see in this collection there are 131 pages most websites don't have any more than 20 pages we have 131 collection pages right here we have 52 collection pages right here we have 22 collection pages right here we have probably over 200 pages of just collection pages here these are all 200 pages that are ranking for a term inside of Google and that's not including all of these pages that I've actually created inside of my Webflow that are static. So as you can see, the power of Webflow is pretty crazy and that's why I always recommend all of my clients to get on it. So that is essentially the full walkthrough of how we are automating a lot of our marketing at Optimizer Marketing. All right, so there you have it. That is how we are automating our marketing at Optimizer Marketing. Now a really quick plug, we are doing this for other marketing agencies right now. We've actually discovered something that a lot of marketing agencies need, and that is systems to create consistent content that is also quality. And a lot of times these marketing agencies are unable to do this because they don't have a lot of time and they don't prioritize it because they get bogged down with client work. Our goal with optimizer marketing as a secondary goal obviously we're you know providing these digital marketing services for software companies but we have identified this need and as a sense of giving back we are offering some of these services for free to, for other marketing agencies that are interested for a limited time because we really want to build this out we want to get way better at optimizing these things inside of other marketing agencies and we want to give back to the community so if you are interested in us providing this service for you completely free of charge for a limited time, then please reach out to us on our partnerships page and apply. We are gonna only be doing it probably for about three to five agencies just so we can build this out. And then we'll probably end up creating a course or just providing this as a service to other marketing agencies in the future. But we really do wanna to try to give back to these marketing agencies and help you guys really build out content efficiently. And I will just extend this offer to other you know, software companies. Generally speaking, you know, when we're working with our clients, um, our digital marketing clients specifically, we will recommend doing these things. So it's not completely out there that we wouldn't recommend this to a software company as well. But we've found that with marketing agencies, this is a need that is truly, that truly does exist and there is not a team usually there to you know, actually do these things. So this is an automated way where you're essentially saving 40 plus hours of your time every single month, just creating content and creating, you know, trust with your prospects. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are an agency owner, whether you're a software company, um, you know, someone who works in a software company, hopefully you found this video helpful and you learned a little bit about automation and marketing automation and AI and no code. So. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any recommendations for future videos like these, let me know. I really do like doing tutorials. Um, I know this video was a way longer than I normally do. So uh, yeah, your honest feedback in the comments would be very much appreciated. Look forward to hearing from you and talk to you soon. Have a great one.